CCM garages over in England. We have got a carburetor from the great guys at Fly Spain, Rob and his crew. We're gonna have a quick look inside one of these today and see how to use a refurb kit. The kit comes from Walbro. Lots of people sell that kit. I think you can see it there. It's got all sorts of bits in there. We're not gonna need all of the bits. We'll um, go through the bits as we do this video and see what we need and what we don't. Um, the reason we are taking this carb apart and refurbing it is because the diaphragms inside have got a bit weak. This carburetor is about a year old, I think, maybe, maybe a little bit more. And what we're experiencing just before launch, your wing's ready, your wires are out, you've warmed up your engine, it's running. As you lean forward, it cuts out. So as we're changing the incline of the carb as we lean forwards, the carb is cutting out, which is a bit annoying just when you want to launch and you've got a nice bit of wind. So we're going to have a look and see why and um, how to just do the refurb job on one of these carbs. Um, broadly, two sides that we're going to deal with, that side where you've got your little bleeder and the other side in there where the diaphragms are. Um, the carb's pretty easy to get off of the engine. A couple of bolts, you can see those in there. Remove those two Allen keys, those guys there. And um, take your carb off. For the sake of this video, we've got a nice white flat area. I would suggest you do the same. Drain as much fuel out of the carb as you can. And um, let's take it apart. We'll do one side first. Um, there are those little paint marks on there. I think they're just there to be nice, really. It's, it's to see if your bolts have come loose. I wouldn't worry about redoing them. I would just let them go. So we'll go into here, whiz these screws off. Take these out. Again, I wouldn't do both sides of the carburetor at the same time if you're not used to doing it, because there's lots of little bits in there. If you don't put them back together in the right order, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot and it won't run at all, which um, isn't great if you want to go paramotoring. So last screw coming out. They're all the same, those screws, so it doesn't matter which order they go back in in. We can just put those in a little pile. Right, we've got this top plate that comes off. You can see there are some lugs there and there, so you can only fit it one way when it goes back, so don't be too concerned. Now try and remember that this, we're lifting off this diaphragm with a gasket underneath it, which way up it went, yeah? We know that the diaphragm is sitting on top of the gasket. You can see the gasket underneath in there, hopefully. Can you see it? Let's pull that diaphragm back. There's the gasket underneath. Don't put them back together the other way around. It won't work quite as well. Right, so we're pulling this diaphragm up. As we pull it up, you'll see there's a tiny little um, noggle on there. I don't even know what they call that really, retaining clip. That fits onto that little bird's mouth there. When we're putting that back together, I don't know if we can really see that, but you'll have to slide that on there very carefully when you put it back together. Just make sure it's caught on there. So let's take that away. Let's just quickly look at this old diaphragm here. I don't know if it will come through very well on the um, video, but you can see it's kind of a bit saggy and baggy. That's just where it's stretched over time. And that's the weakness that we're getting inside this carb and why we're going to refurbish it, because that isn't as taut as it could be. It's just tired with age really in use. So remember that went on the top of the gasket, put one of those over there, carefully pull the gasket away. That goes next. I put all my stuff in a line. I would suggest you might want to do the same. Um, within this carb, let's do a little have a look around. This little fella here that we can move up and down, there's a spring under the center. That's your main jet that lets fuel in and out. Um, if you've ever got a carb blockage, it's pretty unlikely that that guy will ever get blocked because it's quite a big hole and it opens quite wide. You'd have to have a massive bit of grit in there to, um, to worry that. There is a little filter in there you get a new one of those in that kit. You can change it if you want, but again, it's a metal filter. Clean it, but it's not ever gonna go wrong. I wouldn't bother changing it. We can have a quick look inside this carburetor while we're here. We're gonna have a look under this plate here and we'll be able to see where these two jets are as well. So I'll just quickly unscrew those. Doesn't make great video, does it? Me unscrewing things, but let's unscrew them anyway. We've got to do that to get the plate off. Those screws are the same, so it doesn't matter which order they go in. Pop this guy up. Oh. 
We can see underneath here another diaphragm and gasket. We could change these. They don't really go wrong, but you can change them if you want. Um, if I can pick that one apart, I will. And there it goes there. I won't change it during the video, but remember to note which way round the gasket and the diaphragm are. Okay, because if you put them together the wrong way round, it ain't gonna run very well. So there we go, it's come apart. There's the diaphragm on top of the gasket. I don't know if I can actually pull that apart without damaging this one. I don't really want to change it if I don't have to. It, yeah, I can't, it's, it is in there. But you've got this diaphragm, he's flapping around, there's his flappy bit, and there's the gasket, yeah? So that's got to go back together the same way. Leave that there for a minute. In here, we can actually see if the light allows us the end of the jets. So that big one with a tamper um, cover on the screw, that's your fast idle jet. That really, because again, at fast idle, there's plenty of fuel coming through there. It's never gonna block. Your idle jet is this little guy here. We can take him out if we want to. We just unscrew him. Oh, and uh, we could clean in there. If you've ever got a little blockage, an idle problem, that could be in there. For me, I might get a can of um, something and just spray it in there, look. So that we're washing that out. I'll just dab that out over there. That jet, you can take it all the way out if you really want to. We'll have a quick look at it. Um, they don't give you a new jet, it's a piece of metal. It's not gonna wear out by petrol running over the top of it. Okay, pull him out. Oh, it's a long screw. Come on, out you come. There he is, that's the jet there. That goes right through, and the adjustment of that is what adjusts your idle at tick over. So now we need to put it back in, and don't be concerned about trying to think it's gonna be really hard to reset the idle on this. Uh, we can reset the idle on this by putting the screw right in until it stops. Don't try and do it up over tight because um, it'll just damage the end of the needle. So once it goes right in and it comes to a stop, probably around here, come on, there it goes, it's there. Just back that off one and a quarter turns. Ready, so we go, that's half, that's one, and that's a quarter. That is about the idle setting, that's a factory setting. So you can do that. When you first started it up, if it's a little bit low or a little bit high, we're talking a tiny adjustment on that screw. Warm your engine up properly first, but you could be talking, you know, like a tiniest little thing. It's not gonna be whole turns. It's gonna be a tiny little adjustment if it isn't exactly how you want it. Okay, so those again, that's your idle jet, that's your fast jet. Don't adjust those, that really, when, when you pull the trigger and you're wanting full power, there's fuel just bombing through there. You're not gonna prove much by trying to adjust that. And I'd be very surprised if you ever get a blockage in there because we're running so much fuel through that. So we can pop this guy back together. There's that little filter there from the other side. If you did have any debris in there, let me just point it out. You could just jet that out quickly now and clean that. Pop that back in. That's going together. Pop the screws on. One and two. Pretty straightforward stuff really. We just screw those back in. Do them up tight, but don't try and over tighten them. You don't have to be He-Man. It's a carburetor, not an industrial building or something like that. I'm a bit shaky, probably too many beers last night. Now we've got that together. Remember, we know which way we put our parts in order. I'm gonna put a new gasket on. The gasket goes first. It's got locator lugs on it, so it only fits one way. There's the gasket. We've got our new diaphragm here, which looks, I'll, I'll hold the old one next to it. I don't know if you've ever seen the difference or not. If I could pick them up with help. Um, I don't know, you can sort of see one's a bit more baggy and one's nice. Okay, so this is our new one. We've got that little locating lug to fit in there. I'll uh, try and do that so you can see me fitting it in there. Hopefully from that angle you can see it. It's caught on there, I can feel it's caught. So I can do that. Rotate the old guy around to be the right way. 
that back in the middle very delicate isn't it so that's on there that's lovely we know where our jets are we know where that diaphragm goes on with the top make sure the locator lugs are good I can put the screws in I'll just locate one in and then we'll probably pause this video so that you don't have to watch me putting four screws into four holes which is not very exciting okay so our screws are back in that's good let's have a look at the other side bigger screws on this side bigger screwdriver yeah don't use the wrong screwdriver I've seen people trying to do that and stabbing themselves in the hand not much fun well it's fun for me but not much fun for them again don't worry about those those little paint marks I don't think I've ever seen one of these come undone if anybody wants to uh, join on to Fly Spain's uh, blog or their website and tell them that these do come undone, then maybe we'll make a video about thread lock and how to thread lock things in, but I'm pretty sure that nothing will ever come undone as long as you've done it up reasonably tight. Again, don't over tighten it, it's not an industrial building. So we're taking this side apart. Let's make sure we know what we're taking apart. Open that one. We can see now this gasket is on the top. The diaphragm is underneath. Make sure you do them the right way round, yeah? So for me, I'm gonna peel it off. Probably comes off quite easy, like that. These will come in the kit separately. Don't know if it's easy for me to pull this apart or not. Here it comes. They'll come as separate bits in the kit. The kit, when you get it, has got loads of stuff in it. You don't need it all. Don't panic if you've got lots of bits left over. We just need to focus on the bits that we need. There's the old gasket and the diaphragm coming apart. You can see it's pretty much ruining that because it's stuck together. Okay, so I know that it went in that order. Okay, so I'm going to put my, remember, my diaphragm first, then my gasket. So I've got a new diaphragm. Well, let's have a look at that diaphragm quickly. Can you see in the light, it's just a bit saggy. So this diaphragm effectively is a fuel pump. You can prime the, the carburetor by either blowing or your, or your kit's got a primer on it and get fuel into the carburetor. But when the, the, thing, the engine is running, we get, we're using crankcase pressure coming up into the carb to flap this diaphragm in order to pump fuel through so that we can jet it into the engine. So where this gets a bit worn and baggy, that's our weak spot, okay? This carb won't, it hasn't got any rubbish in it, it's not blocked. It's just that this is a bit tired, so it will run, but not as well as it could. If you want to, while you're here, you could get, you know, any sort of carb cleaner, brake cleaner, anything. Just jet those out if you want to. There is also a little tiny um, filter metal one in there. You can pick those out, just get a, a needle or something, actually, a little spike. Just pick it out, get the new one, which comes in the kit. I'll push it across to the bottom there. There's a new one there. When you fit that, you would put it over the hole and then get, um, I would say, a three inch nail or any flat thing, just to push that down in there evenly. Its own strength will hold it in place, but you can see, or I can see in this light quite clearly, there's no debris in there, there's nothing wrong with it. If we were to change it, we'd be changing it for the sake of it, nothing to gain really. Our main thing is to get that diaphragm in, the new one, Here's a nice new flat one. There's more of them in the kit. Don't worry about that, you don't need the other ones. Just take the one you need. Okay, can't remember which way up these go. I think it's that way. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it will be, that goes onto there. That goes like that. Actually, for the sake of doing it, let's do it the other way around and put it all onto the lid. Okay, that comes in the kit as well. Look, that one, ignore that. We don't want that guy. Pop that gasket on there. Pop that diaphragm over the top. It's got locating lugs on it actually, so you can't get it around the wrong way. Okay, that's the kit on there. Oh, there it goes. And let's reassemble it. Let me just, my fat fingers and my hangover are not helping, but we will get there. So that goes back onto the carburetor. Not a very good angle for the video, but it's good for me. So I've got that back together. Quite simply, 
put our screws back in and that is all we need to do really for a good bit of maintenance um, on one of these little wall bro carbs. I would suggest if you want some happy flying and you're a reasonably busy flyer if you're using your carb quite a lot that you would do this once a year. Might be a nice little job to do in the winter one day when you were hoping to fly and it's too windy so you can't fly. Just get your carb off and uh, put that kit in. I think the kits are only like 10 or 12 quid, something like that. And I would say that for 10 or 12 quid, a good investment rather than being at a nice launch, <coughs> at a nice launch site and you can't take off. <coughs> Within the kit, there are a few other bits that uh, are kicking around. So there's a new little um, needle lifter in there. There's that spare gasket we don't need. There's one of those filters. There's some other blanking plugs, um, the actual main jet there, there's that other kit there, there's all the bits are in the kit, but don't be worried if you don't use them all because you don't need them all, okay? So don't think, oh, I've done it wrong because I've got loads of bits left over. Walbro make that kit for various applications, so we're just using the bits that we need. Um, I think that about wraps that up, really. Bolter back on, don't forget you've got a prime fuel into that carburetor before you try and start it. Uh, either blow in your tank or you've got a, any type of a lift pump to get some fuel up there. And um, happy flying, I guess, is the uh, way forward. Thanks very much for watching and uh, thanks to the guys from Fly Spain for sending me this carburetor to make this video. There you go, cheerio.